paranormal and the supernatural realm. How should the average person react to claims of apparitions visiting Earth? They're unexplainable, yet millions of believers lend credence to the possibility that something is happening. Recent appearances of Mary have been reported in nearly every habitable nation. Are these events legitimate? Is God sending us a message? However you answer, one thing is certain. The apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary draw millions to every corner of the globe. appearing all over the world, hundreds of times. I definitely believe something is going on. Over the past several years, as I've traveled to many different countries around the world, I've made some observations that apparitions of Mary are appearing or have appeared almost everywhere. There are supernatural phenomena that are associated with them, including healings, signs and wonders, and as people call them, miracles. And there's no question whatsoever in my mind that these things are credible, that they are happening. Around the world, reports of supernatural events are drawing millions to apparition sites where the Virgin Mary is said to be appearing. Thousands of visionaries from every conceivable background describe a beautiful young woman glowing in radiant splendor. Apparitions of uh, uh, Virgin Mary are supernatural. There's no doubt. Uh, beginning in the Medjugorje, it's spreading all around the Croatia. And uh, people are devoted to Mary because it is a supernatural power. These events are truly remarkable. Millions of devout believers all over the world follow and obey the apparitions of Mary. However, the Bible tells us to test all spirits, even those that come in the name of Christ. As Christians, we believe the Bible is God's inspired message to mankind. The scriptures warn us very clearly that Satan is a master deceiver, and that Satan actually can appear as an angel of light. And we know that the Word of God is light. So Satan can actually manifest himself in the form of the truth or appear to be true and yet be deceptive. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. I believe that we must test every experience by the word of God. I think that is clear in the case of Peter who had a marvelous experience, the transfiguration of Christ, and yet in his own epistle he wrote, we have a more sure word of prophecy, and he was referring to the word of God. That is the standard by which we must judge all things, not our own personal experience, because experiences are most unreliable. Dear children, today I invite you to ask yourself why I am with you this long. I am the mediatrix between you and God. Do not let yourselves be seized by fear or discouragement. Have great confidence in the powerful work of intercession and mediation of your Heavenly Mother. Many apparitions give the message that Mary is the mediator or intercessor for mankind. That is contrary to the scriptures. In the book of Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, the Bible says that Jesus Christ ever lives to make intercession for the saints. And in the book of First Timothy and in the book of Hebrews, the Bible declares that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Little children, I am the mother of good counsel, mediator, who is trying to persuade you to listen to the call. My message is of faith, love, and hope. More than anything, it brings reconciliation between people and nations. It is the only thing that can save this century from war and eternal death. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life, and he is the bridge builder between God and men. And if you try to go to the right or the left, you'll never get there. It's only through Jesus Christ, period. The Bible states clearly there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Not only does the apparition claim to be our mediator and intercessor, 
but she also claims to be our advocate with God. The world is degenerating, so much so that it was necessary for the Father and the Son to send me into the world, among all the peoples, in order to be their advocate and to save them. We are told in 1 John 2 that if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Christ alone was righteous, and therefore he, on the basis of his righteousness, is able to intercede, to advocate for sinners. And so these roles belong exclusively to Christ and cannot in any shape or form be ascribed to Mary. Jesus Christ is our advocate. He never suggested that anybody come to him through Mary, never on this earth and not now. Never ever is this stated. And furthermore, it denigrates Jesus Christ. Why can't I go right to him? He's my savior. He's the one who loves me. And he said that we would go to the Father through him. Then where does Mary come in? Not in the Bible. My daughter, in this time I am the ark for all your brethren. I am the ark of peace. I am the ark of salvation. The ark where my children must enter if they wish to live in the kingdom of God. I think it's most important in Matthew chapter 1 when the angel appears to Joseph to announce the impending birth. He says first of all about Mary, she shall bear a son. That is to be her role, to bear a son. And then he says to Joseph, and this is what he had to do, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So Mary was to bear the son, Joseph was to name him, but Christ is the Savior. He will save people from their sins. And of course, Peter confirms in his first epistle that we were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. There is only one Savior of man. Christ said himself, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. You know, Mary acknowledges that she's a sinner and she needs a savior. And here we see by the scripture that she actually is pleading for Jesus to become her own savior. In Luke chapter one, verse 46, it says, Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior. What a beautiful statement for Mary. Simple, humble Mary. Jesus has become the chief cornerstone nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Uh, in many of the apparitions that people get in the day of Mary, she claims to suffer and uh, atone with Jesus. Uh, that is not biblical because the Bible declares that Christ uh, has suffered for our sins. In fact, when he died, he said, it is finished. He has paid our sins and our suffering completely on the cross. Peter writes, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. And the book of Hebrews states that Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. There is no longer an offering for sin. And the Word of God makes it plain, for instance, in Isaiah 53, that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. This is referring prophetically to Christ. Despite the apparition's claims, God is jealous for his glory. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. There is only one path to God. Jesus said, I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved. There is only one way to heaven, and that is through Christ and him crucified. Jesus predicts that uh, prior to his return that false prophets would arise and if possible would even deceive the elect. Um, that suggests to me that uh, these signs and wonders would be so convincing that uh, apart from the grace of God even genuine Christians can find themselves being deceived and led away. 
and only by trusting in Jesus and Him totally will we find liberty and freedom from sin. And I would call upon you, if you're, you're, you're out there and you're trusting in your church, you're trusting in your works, none of that will save you. What you need is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that He will set you free and He will give you eternal life today.